Hey Alpha Shooters, it's Tim from alphashooters.com. I've got a quick tutorial for you today. I'm going to go over how to set up, edit and record a time lapse in the new Sony A6400. So as you're probably aware, the A6400 now includes an interval shooting option or intervalometer built into the camera itself. This basically allows you to record a series of images over a period of time that you can then stitch together to create a time lapse. Now, although you can view those images back in camera to check that you've recorded them as you intended, what the A6400 won't do for you is stitch those images together to create a movie file that you can then upload to YouTube or view on your mobile device. So to do that, you need some software. Now, there's lots of software out there that you could use, but for this guide, I'm going to go over the free software, Sony Imaging Edge and Play Memories Home, both of which you will require. So I've put the links down in the description field below. Um, now, what this guide isn't, it's not um, an advanced guide to creating the most spectacular time lapses ever. Um, it's simply a very basic guide to creating a very simple time lapse, which I'm going to record in JPEG format. There's not going to be any raw file editing. It really is a basic guide just to get you started with creating your, your very first time lapse. So, with that said, let's jump into the camera settings, shall we? So hit the menu button on the back of the A6400 and jump into the first camera settings number one menu, which is quality and image size one. Um, here you can select your file format that you want to record in. Now, like I said, I'm keeping this really simple, so I'm just gonna record in JPEG. But if you want to shoot in RAW or RAW and JPEG, feel, feel free to do so. But for this tutorial, I'm keeping it simple and I'm shooting in JPEG. I'm not gonna be editing any RAW images afterwards. Um, JPEG quality, I always shoot extra fine. Image size, I always shoot large. Now, aspect ratio for a time lapse, which you're going to be playing back on YouTube or on your TV or on your mobile, you'll want to change the aspect ratio to 16 by 9. If you leave it on 3 by 2, you're going to get black dark bars down the side, which don't look attractive. So I've changed that to 16 by 9. Next, I'm going to go up to camera settings 2 and then scroll across to page 4. And if it's not disabled already, disable steady shot. Um, you may be using a lens that doesn't include optical steady shot built in, but if you are, um, you'll want to turn that off because ideally for a time lapse, your camera is going to be on a tripod, so there shouldn't be any movement. Um, but if you have steady shot turned on and it doesn't find movement, it can actually sometimes actually create movement, which can ruin your shots. So I recommend turning that off. Unless it's a very windy day and you can see your camera maybe moving a little bit, then maybe you want to leave it on. But otherwise, I'd recommend turning it off. Um, next, we want to go back to camera settings number one and then scroll across to page three where you'll find the interval shooting function. Um, so here, first of all, we want to turn it on. Um, now, you're shooting start time. I have mine set to three seconds, but you can... Change this to 99 minutes if you if you wish. Shooting interval, I have mine set to two second, seconds. Um, it's a fairly, my scene I'm shooting is fairly fast moving. Um, there's some swans in the, on the river, um, people walking by, so I want the action to be smooth. So I'm keeping my shooting interval down to two seconds. But if you had a scene with maybe slow moving clouds, then you'd probably want to change this to something like 10 seconds. Um, next, the number of shots that you want to record. I have this set to 1801, but I'm going to change that to 901, which will give me a shooting time of 30 minutes, which is more than enough for the scene that I'm going to shoot. Um, next, A auto exposure tracking sensitivity. I recommend changing this to low, and then if you have any auto exposure changes, then it should be a lot smoother, they should be a lot smoother, and you hopefully shouldn't notice the flicker um, when you play back the time lapse. So go for low. Um, next, go over to page number two. Here you've got silent shooting and interval shooting. Um, that should be on by default. You'll ideally want to leave it on as if you use a mechanical shutter on the A6400, it can potentially introduce shutter shock which can create vibrations and again, ruin your images. Um, it's also additional wear and tear on a mechanical shutter. So I recommend using the electronic shutter and shooting in silent shooting mode. You also have one other option in this menu called shoot interval priority. 
Now, this is only enabled if you're shooting in one of the auto modes where the camera controls the exposure time for you. Um, basically, what it will do is give priority to the shooting interval time that you've set on the previous screen. So if you set a time of two seconds between shots, um, it will make sure that it continues to take a shot every two seconds, even if the camera decides to get a correct exposure that it needs to open the shutter for five seconds. So it will carry on shooting at two seconds. Um, so by default, this is off and I'd recommend leaving it as off as well. And that's about it for the menu settings. So now I'm gonna quickly go over my camera mode, exposure and white balance settings for my particular scene. Now, in an ideal world, when you're shooting a time lapse, you want to set as many camera settings to manual as possible. So that means focusing manually, um, setting your aperture, your shutter speed, your ISO, and your white balance all to manual. Because if you rely on any of your auto settings, then the camera may just adjust the exposure during a time lapse, and these exposure changes can result in flicker when you compile your time lapse later on. So to avoid flicker, you want to set as many settings to manual as possible. Um, it's not always going to be possible if you're shooting a, a night to day time lapse, for example, then you are going to rely on some auto settings. Um, but for my time lapse example, I've kept everything simple, so I was able to set everything to manual. Uh, speaking of my time lapse scene, here it is. This is the River Severn with Worcester Cathedral in the background and lots of swans in the foreground. So for this scene, I change the mode dial to manual, I change my focus mode to manual, I set my aperture to f8, my shutter speed to 250th of a second, my ISO to 100 and my white balance to shade. Of course, the scene that you're shooting is probably gonna require very different settings to mine, um, but I'm not, I'm not gonna go through in this video how to, to change these settings, but if you're unsure, then I'll put some links down in the description field that will help you out. So we should almost be ready now to start recording our first time lapse. But before we do, I'm going to give you a quick battery saving tip. Now, you can actually use an external power bank to power the A6400 via micro USB for really, really long time lapses. But if you want to rely just purely on the internal battery, then I found that it uses for a one hour time lapse with a two second interval between shots, it will use around about 40% of a fully charged battery. But I also found that I can save an additional 25% if I turn my rear LCD screen off. Because by default, when you're recording a time lapse, that LCD screen stays on and that's going to drain more of your battery. However, you can actually turn it off and just use the electronic viewfinder only to check that everything is running smoothly. So to do that, you just need to jump back into the menu settings. So back in the menu, you want to go to camera settings 2 at the top. You'll then want to go over to page six, which is display auto review. Here you're going to find the option find a monitor. Now mine is grayed out, but that's only because I'm using uh, the HDMI out to record this screen. But on yours, you should, should see the option auto set as default. Now if you change this to viewfinder manual, your rear LCD is going to go blank and you'll only be able to view the menu through the electronic viewfinder. So therefore, I do recommend turning off the rear LCD as the last step that you do because trying to set everything up through the EVF only is quite frustrating. Also, as soon as your time lapse has finished recording, just jump back into that menu and set it back to auto again. So you should now hopefully be ready to start recording your time lapse. So to start things off, you simply hit the shutter button. If you set up a delay, it will count down and then it will start shooting. If you want to end the time lapse early, you can do so by simply pressing the shutter button, otherwise it won't stop until it's taken the number of shots that you set in the interval shooting settings. So once it's finished, you can play back the time lapse in camera to check everything is okay. To do that, you simply hit the, the playback button on the back of the camera, and you should now see all of the images from your time lapse grouped together. So to expand that group, press the button in the middle of the scroll wheel, you now have the option to continuously play all of those images. So to start that off, you simply press down on the scroll wheel. Now here you can actually change the playback speed by simply rotating the, the scroll wheel. You can slow it down or you can speed it up. Unfortunately, my screen capture device slows things down a little bit here, but in camera, it will actually play back a lot faster and a lot smoother than you're seeing right now. 
So if you're happy with your time lapse, it all looks good. It's now time to copy the files over to your computer and start editing them. Um, but to do that, like I mentioned earlier, you do need to download and install the Sony Imaging Edge and Play Memories Home applications. So again, the links are down in the description. So please install those and then we'll go on to the next step. And here we are, an Imaging Edge viewer. You'll know it's viewer because it should say viewer in the top left corner. If it says edit or remote, then you've opened the wrong app. Now the first step here is to select the folder where you've copied your time-lapse images to. So mine are here. And you'll now see all of your images appear in this bottom window pane. Now the next step is to select the first image and do Command A on Mac or Control A on Windows to select all of the images for your time lapse. Next, right click and select the option Create Time Lapse Movie. This dialog box appears and you've got a few different options. First is Output Method. Um, this is only applicable if you've recorded your images in RAW format. Since I recorded them in JPEG for my example, I'm going to ignore this section. Next up is File Settings. Um, if you click the advanced option, you can change the compression level from which I think default is two. So I change mine to level one for high quality. Click OK. Next, select the folder where you want to save your time lapse. File name. I chose use original file name. You can change this if you wish. Aspect ratio. I left this as default, which is use the same as shooting settings, um, which should be if you listen to my tips earlier on in the video, 16 by nine. Um, then simply click next. What it will do now is go through and attempt to process all of the images, believing they're raw files. However, they're JPEG, so it just skips processing. Unfortunately, that's just how it works. There's not an option to select JPEG in the previous screen. So once that's done, simply hit the next button. It's now going to prepare the movie for editing. So this can take a little while, depending on how many images your time lapse has or the speed of your computer. So I'm going to fast forward that for you so you don't fall asleep. Ah, once that's finished, you should now see Play Memories Movie Creator in front of you. So from here, you can make a few basic edits to your, your time lapse before compiling the, the finished movie. Uh, but first of all, hit the play button and check that you're happy with it. If you are, and you can stop it and there's a few basic edits that you can make. First of all, you can change your playback speed. So simply drag this slider to increase the speed or drag it the other way to decrease the speed. But I'm happy with a default speed of one times, which gives me a, a playback time of 20 seconds. Next, if you want to add a music track to your time lapse, you can do so from here. Um, fortunately, for whatever reason, the option to select a music file from my computer is greyed out and it won't let me select it or do anything here. So I don't know if that's a bug or what's going on. Um, if it's the same for you, please let me know in the comments below. I'm, I'm curious. However, thankfully, I'm, I'm quite happy with track number four. So I'm going to add that to my time lapse. Next, you can change the volume settings, but I'm happy with a default of 50-50 for both the video and music volume, but I am going to add a fade in and fade out to the music track. Next, coming over here again, you've got a couple more options. First of all, you can trim your time lapse. So if it's too long and you want to shorten it or you want to remove some from the start or the end, you can simply take this bar here, drag it to wherever on the timeline you want your time lapse to start from. And again, the other end of the timeline, you can bring it this way to shorten it like that. However, I'm quite happy with the length of my timeline, so I'm going to put that back to how it was. Next, you've got the option to add captions to your time lapse. So you can enter some text here. And you'll see it appear on your time lapse up here. Now you can change your positioning selecting this box. You can also change the font size if you wish, and you can change the, the color of the font as well. 
and then if you want it to depending on where you want it to appear during your time lapse you may just want it for the first few seconds or you might want it for the entire length of your time lapse simply drag the catch caption box here to wherever you'd like it to appear on your time lapse or if you want it throughout just expand this so it covers the entire length of your time lapse however for my time lapse I don't want any captions, so I'm going to delete it. And that's it. Those are the only basic edits that I'm going to do. Pretty much the only basic edits that you can do here. And I'm going to click next. Here you can give your time lapse a file name. I'm going to leave it as default. You can change the location where you want to save it to. And you can also select the format. So I'm going to select 4K. Um, gives me an estimated file size. Then I'm going to click save. Now, this will take a while, depending on the speed of your computer and the length of your time lapse. So I'm going to save you the boredom and I'm going to skip this bit for you. And here we go. The movie's finally been saved. Um, hopefully in the location that you selected on the previous screen. And you can hit the play button here just to check that everything plays smoothly. And there we go. Hopefully. You've created something a little bit more exciting than my own time lapse. I was really hoping for some boats or rowers to come up and down the river, but unfortunately they, they didn't. But hey ho, I'll, I'll have another go soon. And I'm back, so I hope that wasn't too complicated. Um, if you have any questions whatsoever, please do drop them down in the comments below and I'll do my best to help. Also, if you're on Facebook, I run a group called Sony A6400 Tutors, where you can also post your time lapses or any images you shoot or ask any questions around the A6400. Um, I'll put a link again in the description field below along with links to my recommended A6400 lenses guide and my accessories guide. And yeah, if you found the video helpful, a thumbs up would be appreciated. Um, if not, let me know how I can improve in the comments below. Um, feel free, free to subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more similar content. And yeah, until next time, happy shooting.